Okay, we're going to move on. Okay. So I just want to read a little bit of the commentary. Okay, the third watch, which mentioned a woman conversing with her husband, corresponds to lust. Take it easy and explain it. A person is generally discreet about his sexual desires. Their conversation is therefore associated with the night's final watch, when most people are asleep and thus unaware of his lust, and more concealed of the three evil traits. When teaching this lesson, the famous Rabbi Eliyahu Chaim Rosen, who was a, one of the great Breslov teachers in Yerushalayim, passed away, I think, 20 years ago, would add, as a person ages, his lo he loses his lust, he loses his desire for sexual pleasure. His craving of food, though never entirely gone, certainly diminishes. However, till a person's dying day, he will, never, he will bray like a donkey about money. <laughs> as the Talmud, in fact, pro provides two signs for the night's third watch an infant nurses, and a woman converses. In this lesson, Rabbi Nachman reverses the order. He first mentions a woman conversing, showing that it alludes to intim intimacy, and then he discusses the final sign, an infant nursing, which alludes to the offspring born of that conversation. It says in the, in, the, in the Gemara, the most intimate thing that a couple can do is to talk to each other. It's the highest level of intimacy is speech. It's a beautiful thing I read. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, in, in, the, um, in the commentary here, it says that when a person is, when a child is suckled by a, a, a righteous woman, his, his desires for, for sexual drive is, is in check. It's not out of control later in life. Very interesting. So now, Rabbi Nachman is going to explain and prove how mother's milk affects a child. And again, this is all based on the building of Jerusalem and God forbid the opposite. And this is all based on building a person's heart or God forbid breaking the heart. So we're on page 25. This is as our sages of blessed memory taught in, in the Gemara of Avadazur. David was not suited for that deed, as it is stated, and my heart is hollow within me. So the famous story where David, I'm going to get into this now, I'm going to get yelled at. Uh, David was on the porch of his house. He saw Bathsheba bathing. He desired her. Her husband was killed. He married her. And as a punishment for not doing the right thing, his firstborn son, uh, firstborn child was born stillborn, and all his children um, revolted against him. But the Gemara says David never really sinned. How do we know this? This is very deep stuff. I'm not going to go into it takes another five hours to explain what happened there, but this let's stay with the lesson, and you could do some uh, learning later on about it. So, the special, very famous saying in the, in the Tehillim, David HaMelech says, Lebi halal bekirbi, my heart is hollow within me. Very famous in the Hasidic world by all the Rebbe's, they say it all the time. The initial letters of Lebi halal bekirbi spell milk. That my heart is hollow within me, Halal also means a, a dead person. That King David killed his Yetzirah. And, but milk, how so? It came from the milk. In, in other words, because of his mother, who was very modest, his heart is hollow within, within him, and his de desire did not dominate him. Therefore, David, who had attained this level, was not suited to make a sin. So, it's just Rabbi Nachman brought a proof that... He was uh, nursed by a righteous woman, and his desire, sexual desire, wasn't um, self-destructive. As we follow with the, with the lesson, conversely, the milk 
of an immodest woman generates excessive passion in the heart. Corresponding to Kham Libi Bikirbi, my heart is hot within me, which also spell halav, milk. So it's very interesting that there, is, there are secrets here. If you want to look, they're here. So he's saying milk, not soy milk, regular milk. It's heavy stuff. Okay. This is the meaning of what our sages of blessed memory taught. At each, at each, each, at each watch, I think I'll take some water. At each watch, Hashem sits and roars like a lion. over the undermining of fear. And God sees that all these people are lost in their desires. They're overcome by their impulses. And God's flipping out, saying, Hello, what are you doing? You have a higher self. That's not who you are. You're not an addict. You don't, you know, you can get out of this. So every, God is screaming every night. And, and this is very interesting. I didn't. I didn't. I read this many times. But I, it's the first time I got this. Even though it says it clearly, I didn't get it. Now I got it. You could read something and not get it, and read it and then get it. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The word. The word for lion. Arie, is the same word as yura, as fear. So when a lion screams wow. at night. Everybody flips out. Everybody gets scared. Whoa! The lion is the king of the jungle. You heard the Lion King? You saw that movie? Some people call it the Zion King because it was made by Jews. So every night God is, is screaming at every person in their life. Hello! What are you doing? Don't ruin your life. You are above all these things. These three things are hurting your heart they're hurting Jerusalem. Jerusalem means the perfection of fear when you really see things cleanly and clearly, which is the, which is the, the perfection of the heart. When you, when you are afraid to hurt someone, when you are afraid to say the wrong thing. So every day in our life, we get this message. As it says, every day from Mount Sinai, a message goes out to every person. Come back to the Torah. Okay. Now, Rabbi Nachman. What's the word for lion and what's the word for fear? Arie is lion. Yura is fear. It's mm -hmm. the same letters. You see it, read it, you see it in the Hebrew. Okay, now let's see. See what the commentaries say. Check this out. Commentary on fifty. As long as fear is lacking, the rebuilding of Jerusalem is undermined. It has nothing to do with Netanyahu or Obama. Nothing. It has to do with your neshama, it has to do with your desire for good, it has to do with your connection. Are you elevating yourself? Are you evolving? God therefore roars like a lion to arouse the fear in the heart and to bring the world to perfection. Everything that a person does is a, is a small world. Every Jew, every person that does something good is building the world. It says here that a Jew is created to have dominion over the angels. The angel is the Yetzahara, is the evil inclination, the self-destructive impulse in every person. That's an angel. It's made out of fire. And it's very hard for us to overcome an angel. But we have the ability to overcome an angel with the good fire. And when we do these right things, we build Jerusalem. This week was Jerusalem Day. Now, Rabbi Nachman is going to go into something very beautiful now. Rabbi Nachman spoke about the negative stuff. Now he's going to talk about the positive stuff. Now the way to rectify these three traits is through, look at this, how he uses his words, it's gorgeous. Unitive knowledge and awareness of God. I'll say it in Hebrew. Letaken shalosh midot. 
and to fix these three characteristics. Ilu, hu aide hadat is through dat, das, is knowledge. Shasarichin hamshich hadat el halev is to bring down what's here over here. That you should know it today and, and you should know it in your heart. One has to draw down the here, what's in your mind, into the heart. And that's how you rectify these three things. It's very interesting how the, the, the mind is higher than the heart and it should affect it. Also, the heart affects the mind also. So, let's go to the next page. This gets very beautiful now. The Da'at corresponds to the three mentalities, the Mochin, the three regions of the brain. These also correspond to the three festivals, Sukkot, Shavuot, and Pesach, the three parts of the brain, and the three festivals are connected. The other commentaries say, Physiologically, the brain's three mentalities or intellects or three regions are its right and left hemispheres and the midbrain, each of which has separate and distinct functions. The Kabbalah teaches that the th three parts of the brain are synonymous with the three upper sefirot, Kete, Chochmah, and Bina. It's funny how the Zohar spoke about the anatomy before anybody was writing about it in Greece. Can you stop it? 